So starting from the middle end of the antenna, we have a junction box. And uh, the antenna uh, is attached by a small piece of PVC. And from there on is the 27 feet of fiberglass uh, pole, which supports the wire antenna all the way to its end. Going back to the junction box, uh, that's uh, 44 to 6 turns of magnet wire on a FT114 Type J toroid. And uh, it's uh, weather sealed in there, but I, I also put a little bit of uh, foil tape kind of uh, hanging over the connections that keeps uh, snow and rain off it in the first place. Um, you know, they're, they're sealed up with electrical tape, and I check them regularly, so it's not usually a problem. Uh, but uh, the little bit of extra foil tape kind of kind of makes an overhang and helps uh, weatherizing. Though. So from the junction box where the antenna comes into the mast, the mast is 13 feet of heavy gauge um, fence posting. Uh, it's three inch fence post, and it comes down to the uh, pivot point, which is a half inch bolt on one side uh, with a wing nut for ease of removal. Though I've never removed it yet on the other side. The, uh, the mast is uh, pivoting about six feet off the ground and uh, it's attached by the, by the pivot bolt um, to two more uh, heavy gauge fencing posts. It's three and a half inch galvanized fencing posts for the, um, the base and they stick about six the, feet the base itself extends about six feet off the ground where the pivot point is and they go down to the ground and then they extend about three feet into the ground. Um, the pit for the the base was approximately two feet around and three feet deep and uh, before I poured the concrete in I put uh, several pieces of four foot rebar which I pounded into the ground around it and then ha had them contact the base of the mast um, and then I poured in uh, nine or ten bags of concrete cement in addition I also added the uh, standard uh, half inch grounding rod, a copper coated grounding rod which extends about six feet into the ground. Now you can't uh, see this too well because of all the snow on the ground but um, maybe I'll take another shot once the snow melts so you can get a better idea of how the base of the mast looks. The winch mechanism is attached to one of the, uh, the base posts with uh, half inch bolts uh, all galvanized steel for weatherizing. This whole winch has been outside here for roughly uh, six to seven years now and uh, you can see the galvanizing is holding up there's no rust in it whatsoever uh, the quarter inch steel cable has a little bit of rust on it It used to be plastic coated but as you can see from this close up here you can see most of that is broken off it gets brittle and wears out and can't take it so I would recommend if you're going to do this just use a galvanized steel cable uh, to, to uh, winch up the mast from the winch uh, the cable goes down uh, to a pulley, which is actually secured uh, into the into the concrete by uh, a U-bolt and a couple of washers on the end of that. The U-bolt actually goes into the ground uh, 8 to 10 inches. It was really long, and I put several washers in there so that when the concrete froze up, it would hold it in there really tightly. And then on the end, there's just a little uh, U-hook that the pulley is attached to. allows it to pivot, and the pulley um, gives some added force, uh, you know, through standard pulley mechanisms. The quarter inch cable comes back up through there, is attached to the bottom of the mast. Uh, I'm just using some actually fence ends which are usually used to stretch out, um, you know, chain link fence, but uh, they're, they're uh, on here bolted on tight, they can't move, they've never moved, and then uh, the uh, cable comes around and I'm using two cable secure uh, bolts to um, hold it tight there. They've never had a problem with this. It's never come loose. It's held up here for seven years and many, many uh, of deploying of the antenna up and down. The mast is really simple to crank up. It's using a standard uh, small uh, boat winch or come along, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, it has a latching mechanism um, which you can keep on if your hand or arm strength is not what it used to be and it won't fly back and hit you. Um, but uh, if you're not concerned about that, you can release the latch and crank it up like this, uh, which goes pretty fast, but you do want to be aware that if you're not careful, this can come flying back, especially when most of the weight uh, is on, on the pulley and crank system. So the farther you get this up, um, the more weight's going to be on this, and this can fly back and hit you in the head or hands if you're not careful. So if you're really concerned about that, put the latch on. It makes a lot of noise. 
keeps it a bit safer. So we'll finish cranking this up. So the whole process it's using quarter inch steel cable. Um, it used to have uh, plastic coating on it, but that gets really brittle and breaks off over a couple of years of use being outside. Um, you can see the whole thing cranks up really fast. When I have it uh, locked in place, I'll put the latch in so that it doesn't go back. And uh, we can see that the tire mechanism is cranked up to its full uh, 42 foot height with the mast and the uh, 27 inch. here with the full 27 inch antenna on top of the 13 foot crank up mast. Um, and there's the uh, junction box right there where the matching transformer is and the uh, coax cable uh, to the junction box. Uh, bringing the entire affair down is basically just the opposite of that. You need to pull a little bit on the bottom to get the weight to pivot over, but it's, it's really pretty simple. Bringing the whole fair down, pull a little bit on the bottom here until I get the weight on the pulleys, the whole pulley system. Once it gets on there, it'll go down by itself, but uh, you want to be careful if you let go. Once again, you can have that problem of it hitting in the hand or face if you're not watching what you're doing. And once the weight is on here, it can actually come around pretty quickly if you're not careful. Well, that's not a very good example, but here we go. We'll do this. And you can see it come around pretty fast if you're not careful and then watching what you're doing. Basically, I bring it down into uh, a horizontal position uh, where I stop the crank process. So when it's horizontal, I'll put the lock in. Pick it up a little bit like that. The coax I'm using um, is a RG6 quad shield. Uh, it goes back to that little bundle you see up against the house there. That's kind of my grounding block. Um, it, it comes down along the ground. It comes up the side of the post where I have it zip tied. I have a little bit of extra here uh, for relief so that when I put the antenna up and down it doesn't strain the cable and then it's zip tied along the uh, zip tied along the mast uh, up until I get to the junction box where the antenna wires are connected. So right now the antenna is completely cranked down and you see that it's sagging on the ground but what I use to support it when I'm not uh, using the antenna in the upright position which is most of the time um, is these uh, I have a hook eye up here where I have a Another small steel cable, and then uh, I have a bungee cord which I just hook up to here, and it supports the antenna like that. I have one farther down on it, on the op on the far end. Do the same thing, and I take the other bungee, and you can use a lot of things, but it hooks up, supports the entire antenna, and it keeps it from sagging on the ground. So basically, um, it's hiding behind my fence. You can't see it from the front of the house. Uh, and uh, these, this cable system supports it, keeps it from dragging on the ground, and keeps it out of the way of uh, kids and dogs and such. So now I'm going to do a full deployment of the mast so you can see how easy it is. I can get it up and down. Well, I can put it up in about less than two minutes. Um, and I don't really have to hurry or rush. This is snow, so I'm not going to do a lot of rushing, but here we go. There's one connection. Second one. It's very easy to put up. The winch makes it even simpler. Um, a five-year-old can do it in a little bit longer time than I did. And uh, here you can see uh, the entire mast. Uh, the top is approximately 40 feet off the ground. Uh, 27 feet of fiberglass 
uh, rod, telescoping fiberglass rod from DX Engineering. Goes down uh, to uh, about 13 feet off the ground where the junction box is, and then the uh, heavy gauge uh, galvanized steel fencing post. This gives you some idea of the flexibility of the fiberglass pole. You can see where it uh, gets into the, the fence post masting down there, and then it's quite flexible right now. I'm not going to pull on it or anything, but it flexes quite a bit when you're putting it up and down. When I originally constructed the mast, I actually used two additional telescoping pieces of heavier gauge uh, fence posting. Uh, and actually the mast in itself was uh, uh, 30, 35 feet tall. Um, and then I had the antenna on top of that. Um, you can see there's kind of a, a tree over here which there really wasn't room to, to put the whole thing in there without so it. So I had this extra hinge me mechanism on top of the mast where I folded the actual antenna down along the 35 foot mast and then once the mast was deployed I was able to pivot it up on the hinge um, using um, some additional steel cable. You, I don't have it anymore because it didn't really help, it just added, uh, it added signal length strength but it didn't really help the signal to noise ratio. So this mechanism here, this hinge mechanism was up on the top of the mast and the antenna uh, came off of one end um, and ran down the mast until I deployed it up.